Today's video is thinking about water features. So the first thing that I think about when building a water feature is where is the viewing area? So this particular water feature, we've got a couple of things because we've got multiple viewing areas. We've got a slope that slopes away from the house. So we've got to take that into consideration as well. Well, why don't you come up here and I'll explain what's going on at the top here. So when coming to a new location, I always think, what would I do if this was mine? And the brief on this one was the clients wanted a natural looking water feature. And I was like, okay, let's think about where is the seating area? Where are you going to spend most of your time? Is it inside the house looking out? Is it outside looking in? Most of the time, what you're doing is you're washing up or looking out the window in a conservatory, looking out the window. Then you can enjoy a water feature 365 days a year. So come in and having a look in the space where you're spending most time. You know, sit and have a drink, work out what you want to see, what you want to hear, what you want to feel. So water features can bring a number of different dimensions to any back garden. What we've got here is we've got a water feature that we're in the process of building and you may have seen a couple of other videos on this particular project. What we've got at the top here is we've got a spillway bowl that elevates because let's say we, we didn't have um, the spillway bowl and we just had the natural looking water feature, you'd actually lose the effect. So let's come and sit over here by the table. As you can see, you can't really see the natural looking water feature, but the bowl, the ponytail falls coming out of the bowl, you can see that. So it's a lovely elevation change. And the reason why I didn't build the waterfall up that high was because it would look completely unnatural. It would look like a volcano. It would look like um, an ant's nest. But with the man-made fiberglass bowl, it's 360 degree viewing. Let's go over there now and have a look. So as you can see, you've got an elevation change of about, I don't know, about 10 to 12 inches, and it looks fantastic. So it's elevated. We've got a light at the bottom there, so it actually illuminates the water feature. We've got plants in the top. Um, we need to do a little bit more detail um, work in the actual bowl. We might add a couple more plants. We might put some more stone in there. The main reason why I'm showing you this is you've got to think about the viewing point. And if it was just up here, like I was saying, we want elevation. It could be an urn, it could be basalt columns, it could be pagoda rocks. From this garden, you've got a sloping garden that slopes away from the house. So there's a couple of things that you need to think about when you're thinking about water features in a sloping garden. Yes, you might be looking at the elevation change and going, oh my God, this is absolutely fantastic this is what i want when you've got a water feature that's sloping away you've got options you know you can terrace it out the back if you had a slope that came towards the house it would be even more options because the water is actually flowing towards you so all of the sound and everything else like that and you need to think about what you've got in your location so this garden lends itself to a pondless water feature as you can see looking back at the house now you've got a lovely stream lovely waterfall and it's absolutely spot on another thing you need to think about is when building a water feature what do you want to do what's the maximum impact that you want from the water feature is it the sound you know i'm standing at the bottom of the water feature and there's a lot more sound from the waterfall now rather than at the top but that's a good thing because if you're sitting and having lunch with your friends you don't want an overpowering sound of a waterfall but because it's actually flowing away from the destination spot you, it, it doesn't matter what sound it's actually great to have sound in the background because you it's sort of like you're taken to a place and it's like wow what's that sound you just want to go on a journey and have a look and that's what you want to create in a garden is create those journeys, create those pockets. So if you're looking for the sound of running water, you need to think about what is it? Is it something in the background? Is it something to drown out noise? Is it something 
just as a, a background accent, is it something to attract wildlife in? Another thing you need to think about is a visual point of view. What do we want to see? You know, are you happy? Do you want a man-made feature where it could be that you, that you actually want um, something that's man-made, very formal, very clean, very crisp? It could be that you want something that's recreated in nature and that's a hard thing to do. So if you're looking for a naturalistic water feature and you've not built many water features in the past, what you need to do is you need to hire a professional. Have a look at their website and think about what you like about their features. It may even be that they've not got all of their features on their website. It may be that they're, you know, like us, we haven't got all of the features on our website. Every single water feature is designed specifically for the clients in mind. What we've actually done on this particular feature, we've built a small aspect, so it's sort of like phase one, possibly. If it was me, I would actually have um, a waterfall coming down here and a great big recreational pool where I'm standing. This would actually be a great big pond. But not everybody wants the same thing. You know, I'm a water feature, I'm a, a water gardener, um, and, you know, literally I live and breathe water gardens and everything else. But the clients here at this property, they wanted to, like I was saying before, recreate nature. They want memories of, um, you know, holidays away. What I've done is I've created the waterfall so it looks like it disappears. And then what you've got is you've got a slope, a natural slope that runs from one side of the garden to the other side. So it actually looks from here, it looks like it disappears. And then phase two or phase three, we could actually have it come out in the flower bed. So a lot of people would think in certain areas of this garden, what happens there? Well, that is the whole mystery of a pondless water feature. Let's go up there now and I'll tell you what I'm talking about. So as you can see, there's a, there's a mark on this um, grass and it's actually for a slip and slide. They actually, the clients have, um, you know, boys and they literally want to have fun in the garden. So that's a big um, factor. So they didn't want a water feature that came down into a great big recreational pond. So what we actually did is we built phase one of this particular project. Now we can add to phases anytime we want. So it disappears into gravel. That's the whole technology of pondless water features. And then what I will actually do is when we finish this off is I'll actually kick the water so it actually looks like it's flowing this way. I only left it like this over the weekend so it, it wouldn't block up. So the water comes out of the ground and then flows and it goes with the elevation change. So it actually goes this way. And then what we can actually do is look at phase two and phase possibly three about having a wildlife pond here. And with one of the wildlife ponds that we took up um, from actually recreating this feature, the homeowner put it in with a little bit of the soil, but we could put in a natural looking wildlife pond here with a waterfall coming down the steps. So my name is Mark, the Pond Advisor, and I'm here to support you. Dream, plan, and enjoy ponds and water features, whether you want something professionally installed or whether you want to do a DIY feature.